I'm recording. Okay, guys, let's let's do a podcast. Oh. <laughs> Another one. Another podcast. Another podcast. Episode uh, 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 130, uh, uh, six, five, seven, 130 something podcast. Welcome. We're going to talk today about Linux. Oh my god. And why it's it's better than Windows and if you're still if you're still on a Windows machine in 2020 <laughs> I'm going to say uh get with the program, computer program in brackets before program. It's a funny joke. <laughs> <laughs> wow. God, that was really funny surprisingly. I wasn't sure where you were going to go with that one, but We have fun on this podcast. It's about jokes. And uh, Debian. <laughs> Debian. <laughs> <laughs> Raspberry <laughs> Pi. Did you know that all of these podcasts I can fit onto one Raspberry Pi? That's really interesting, isn't it? <laughs> God, you know, <laughs> the ros- pe- people that do stuff with Raspberry Pis, bless them. No, nah, don't but, uh, bless them. I, I, I don't have time no, there for There are some it. good people. I don't know. There are some good people. Debatable. But I just think it's funny. They're like, actually, I, uh, uh, I have a Raspberry Pi running at home that feeds my goldfish. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I know it's always it's always some like Pee Wee Herman shit when when it's a, when it's a Raspberry Pi, isn't it? It's never like it's never anything decent. It's always some fucking weird Wallace and Gromit ass shit that somebody's <clears throat> made like in there. You can just imagine these guys like that. You know, they work for like a, like a big defense contractor, and they've got like pocket protectors, and they have a garden shed that they tinker with their Raspberry Pi in their free time and stuff like that. I know I'm generalizing big time here, but this is how <laughs> that's I, what we do. This is how that's I really what feel. We do <laughs> I think I think those kind of engineers see problems in their everyday life yeah. that are easily solvable with a little bit of automation. Well, I think that, I think they see if, problems that nobody else sees as problems, right? And then right. they and then they go on Dragon's Den and value their businesses at a million dollars before they've even created something. That's the that's the same guy, right? That does. Did you ever all see this? the the Dragon's Den guy who had invented uh, a box that he said was the most efficient gear system in the world. And he said, if we put this into wind farms and stuff like that, these gears are so much more efficient that it'll like quadruple the amount of uh, power you get out. My gearbox is the best gearbox. And it was, he brought it in. It was just a box. <laughs> And they were like, can we see inside? He was like, no, that's all proprietary knowledge. Oh. And they were like, did you have a business plan? He goes, no, I'm not a businessman. Uh, I'm an inventor. And what I've invented here is uh, a, a gear system that is, and, and they were like, no, no, we, we understand that. What do you want us to do with it? Do you have a patent on it? And all this kind of stuff. And he was just like, no, no, it's just the box. He had nothing. He had no presentation. He just, <laughs> imagine he essentially brought in an a empty magic shoe box. box. Yeah. A magic box. He wouldn't show them what was in it. And he wanted a ton of money. It was hilarious. They were like, no. Yeah. And I'm I, thinking, what if that guy's box really was the, the future of, of gears and was incredible? And he was just so bad at selling the idea that well, that's that. The, because the thing is, there's probably been a lot of inventions that have never seen the light of day because of people like that, really, who are who are hopeless at marketing their idea or getting it in front of the right people. Or whatever, you know what I mean? Like it's it, yeah. it, it's a big part of it that a lot of people seem to just ignore. You know what I mean? You have like to these... pair them up with someone with the charisma. You know, not just then... that. Look, look but... at Marconi, dude. Look at Marconi, the dude that everybody thinks invented the radio and everything, but he didn't, right? Marconi was. I watched this. There was a thing on uh, BBC Four or whatever the t- channel is. Seven, BBC Twelve, the one that's just nerd shit and it's weird right that one anyway uh, right i've never it's all, heard ra- of it. it's all run Did on they, a raspberry pie, raspberry pie? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah oh god actually this entire station is being run by a raspberry pie <laughs> <laughs> he can, yeah he got a the tory boy from harry enfield <laughs> with the fire game. <laughs> <laughs> the raspberry pie <laughs> so marconi basically lifted all these cool ideas that science had come up with about the radio and he knew how to sell. Yeah. And this guy, I was hearing about it, Oliver Lodge was his name. He did loads of stuff for the radio. Like he was one of the the absolute pioneers of of radio. But he comes up with all this stuff. He's like, wow, this is fantastic. People are going to love this. And he goes, well, I'm going on holiday. And he went on holiday. And when he came back, Marconi had got there ahead of him and had said, I have invented the radio (laughs) and and made a fucking (laughs) fortune. And Marconi became this powerhouse and ended up buying a bunch of Oliver Lodge's shit that he patented. 
And it's just like, if you don't have the wherewithal to to sell your shit, I'm super sorry, it sucks. But, you you, you know, some other fucker's going to get there first and probably do it worse. Yeah. It's true. <sighs> there's this. It is true. There's this thing. Money, obviously. This this Marconi was obviously rich already, right? So it was easy for yeah, him. Yeah. Well, to... I mean, they may name pasta after him, so he must have already been pretty pretty rich, right? There's this thing <laughs> which Bill Gates said, which I, I saw somewhere on a stupid Reddit thread this week about how if he were to hire someone for a job, he would take the laziest person because they'll find a way to do that job quickly and efficiently right yeah. <laughs> where was i when That's he was headhunting these people yeah. fuck i could have been employee number i could have been rich but i would have been rich by now i'm like the laziest guy i know jeez bill if you're out there i'll never write a single line of code <laughs> nor nor <laughs> produce any work and the laziest man alive <clears throat> you give me a job i'll do it in two seconds bill i feel hassled by having to walk five steps to my garage every day i'm your man <laughs> If but something lands in my inbox, I've developed a system for completing the work. I simply pick it up and move it to my outbox. That's it. From the in-tray to the out-tray. Job done. Lazy man succeeds again. I think that's... Oh, yeah, so there's uh, there a whole thread of people talking about this, the kind of things they've done. and uh, They were typically stuff like, you know, took on a job as data entry where it was all being done sort of by hand. Um, and there was this old fella who was just copy-pasting between boxes. It took him a week to do it. And so when I took over, I made a script that did it in 10 minutes and then, you know, just convinced them to let me work from home. And so I could just have that job done in 10 minutes on a Monday morning. You know, I'd reply to a few messages and go to a few meetings over the rest of the week and just have a second job going in the background. You did this? No, not me, but there was oh. a guy, th a thread to talking about it, um, of people doing doing stuff Telling, telling their stories about how they mm, telling how their done. lies about how they did a thing that's that's impressive it is probably that but you could see situations where someone could solve these problems with the raspberry pie um <laughs> basically do done a little bit of coding and i wouldn't know where to begin with that stuff at all actually but I'm sure it's it's not as complicated as it as it as it looks. Most no. of all, mostly it's, it's just it's, like plug right. and play stuff these days. You know, you're not exactly. making the chips. You're just sort of exactly. You've it already just, got a little operating system. You just have to line up the arrows and yeah. and you don't have to fit it into like one K. That's like it. A, it's like it, it's like brain surgery now as well. Pretty much just does itself. You don't need to. <laughs> you, don't, you don't need to know. And you don't need to be at all I skilled it's or a anything. Piece of it's piece. pretty plug Fucking and play. Like bra all just, brains are the same anyway, isn't it? You just yeah. crack over. Open the head, stick a scalpel in there, give it a wiggle. <laughs> still there. Give it a little stir. Job done. Yeah. Is that, uh, is that done anything, mate? Oh, yeah. Headache's gone now. Perfect. Whack his head back on, stitch it up, Frankenstein style. Bit of electricity to get him going, and off you go. Job done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Easy, easy peasy. I I, I, I like I like a lazy man solution. I think that you know, it, that lazy doesn't mean che cheating or like skiving off. You know, it doesn't necessarily mean. Just because you don't want to have to do the repetitive stuff. I think you know what I think it is, mate. They're more interesting people because you got you got something else you want to be doing. Yeah, it doesn't. It happens to not coincide with this boring ass job you've got to That's do. That's it. So you want to get it done quick. You want to get, get it home. You get might want to do. Life. You might want to spend the whole day just having like a monster wank, and you don't want to be at work. You can't do that at work. It's thinking about difficult. problems and stuff. So you, yeah. you you think of a really elegant, simple solution. You implement it. And you go home. And you fucking masturbate yourself into oblivion, oblivion for the rest of the day. And I think that's a good compromise. No, no, no. Here's the problem, though. Here's the problem. You're too lazy to masturbate yourself into oblivion. So then you build a masturbatatron, right? right? Where does with this, the, where does this the, end? Powered by Raspberry <laughs> Pi. Who just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I increased the thrust levels by 10%. And wow, the results are insane. I bake a warm Raspberry Pi in my oven and I get it out. And if I uh, put this on a stick and put my dick into it, <laughs> I get, do some springs and hook that up to my Raspberry Pi computer, then I get a wankamatron and I can wank myself off all day. Matron. Um, Matron. Well, the thing is, where does this end, right? It's got to be after. Yeah, where does it end? After, you've, it after end? you've freed up your whole day 
for the wanker patrol to do its work and your job. You've done those two. Yeah. What what's next to automate? You know, the like, world you're never is gonna your stop oyster. making and then food before for you yourself. Know it, all the things. It's something you know. You have to automate. You don't. No longer will you have to go to the toilet and like lift the lid and pee into the toilet or sit even sit down on the toilet or whatever. You know, maybe you can have some like nanos in your body that just like evaporate the piss sort of thing nanos piss evaporators that we've been, we're inventing a shitload of things today yeah yeah How, but, why does it have to be that complicated it could just be like a little balloon that goes over the end of your your winky and then <laughs> when you need to they have pee. those they call them condoms <laughs> <laughs> yes that's true imagine right if there was like a bit of rubber or something and you could put it over the end of your knob yeah imagine that <sighs> but for pee oh, balloons but for yeah. pee not for not for any people, in, people in a panic will apparently use cling film as a, as a desperate last ditch. I've got to have sex, but you don't have a condom. Right. Shout out to cling film, you know? Shout yeah. out to those people using cling film. I don't yeah. feel like that's ever... They're the, a... true, they're the real dreamers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I don't know if I've ever been like... I think I think the moment the cling film, film touched my penis, I would... Uh, my My sex drive would diminish to such a low point that... I feel like my penis would like kind of retract into my body, like what well, once you'd wrapped it in cling. Not film. even, I like, think, just like like sort of getting the, the cling of... film close to my penis and thinking that I'm about to do this would would turn me off big time. It would be, I don't think I'd it's, be able I, to do it. Yeah, well, it's better than tin foil, I guess. But yeah, it's true. Yeah, marginally. Yeah, but I I, I think at that point you just have to just. You know, get the Raspberry Pi out of the oven instead. There's just there's other options there. There's a, yeah, mean, there's a couple of other options for you, you there don't for need sure. To, yeah. I mean, let it cool, obviously. Maybe on your windowsill outside. Yes. The smell wafting across the local area. Oh man. Um, Does anyone still cool a pie? I never understood why they needed a windowsill. I, What's going on in your house? I don't think you people can't really bake, pie bake pies from scratch anymore, do they? You kind of buy it from a store and microwave it and then eat it. Like I don't, I don't think, think many it's... people are microwaving their pies. No, like not a proper no. pie, not a big one. Oh, Maybe right. like Miss, a small... Mrs. F made uh, rhubarb crumble right. last week. It was delicious. Didn't didn't put it on the the ledge to cool. Right. Put it on the fucking next to the oven. Unless your entire kitchen is itself a gigantic walk in oven. Which sounds like the worst. I mean, they got walk-in fridges. So there's well, so, look, so there's, no walk-in ovens. Think I'm about sure it. I'm sure people are leaving them outside. So there's a list like, of things that you would and wouldn't um, put in the microwave. For example, like if you bought a store-bought pie um, that you just you wanted to warm up quickly, no. you would no. put that in no. an oven. No, yeah. uh, that would be oven. Yeah, why? Like a, pasties. What's the if difference? You if you're if you're microwaving stuff already, what's the difference? Quicker. I'll obviously. tell you what the difference is. If it's meant to be crispy at all, that will not happen in a microwave. But these are pre these are pre baked though. They've already it doesn't crispy. Matter. It doesn't They're matter when you when you put them in there. The microwave decrisps. Because it, right. it makes it, it, it heats up all the moisture and that kills the, by heating up the moisture in the pie, I think what happens is it, it, it vaporizes, gets into the, soaks into the pie crust and makes it go soggy. Because if you put pizza in the microwave, it comes out soggy. Pies, soggy. But Pasties, some pizzas soggy. you want to be soggy, like a, like a pizza pop, you want to be soggy, right? You, what you, is a pizza pop? It's like a, it's like, you know, I don't know if they get them in, um, in the UK, but in America, you, they're like frozen pizza pockets you know like they're like Ugh. they're like calzones yeah. i guess they're they've got yeah. like pizza filling in like a pastry um Ugh. but it's like um you well i mean when i was a kid we used to get them sometimes i we we yeah. just put them in the microwave because it just yeah, took two uh, minutes when to I had, warm them when up. i was a kid there was we had the little microwave pizzas i think it's the difference between a sauna and a steam room you know one of them's one of them's drying right and one of them's Moist, moist, and one of them's right. Okay, yeah, I think maybe that's. More... I mean, you get a, a, there's a difference between electric and gas ovens too, though, right? Like in terms of how your food is cooked and and the consistency to, to, at which it's cooked extent. and stuff. The electric electric ovens, I find, dry out food a little bit more than say like a gas gas oven. The fan ovens are more drying. I think, yeah, yeah I think they circulate the air. I had a gas more. oven at the at the apartment I used to live in, which is really nice actually. But I found the food was always a lot more juicy. You know, it didn't feel <laughs> it wasn't dried out. I can't quite explain it, but it definitely juicy. had a different juicy. Definitely had like a different outcome juicy. to a fully electric fan assisted oven. You know what I mean? Yes, absolutely. And then a barbecue as well. Barbecue. 
the cooking is different too because you have that um, infusion of uh, you can smell the burning coals like infused into your food, right? It's like a- Ooh, that reminds me. I got a new appliance on Father's Day. A pizza oven. Right. Used it at the weekend. Oh, is this like one of those? Have you have you guys seen these? Like, um, you can get like these pizza stones. It's like a it's like a stone that like superheats. You just put it in the oven where you put your pizza on it. But it's like right. it, it basically emulates like a you know like like one of those like stone bake ovens. Yeah, you know, like the old so style. So that, that's what this has. Oh, like it's a it, it's like it looks like an aircraft hangar. Right. Like it's a sort of curved thing. And at the back, you put the fuel in and get a fire going, and the fire sort of goes along inside the uh, the oven. Oh, is it outdoor? And then it's got a little chimney, and it's got a, a door, like you you know, with a little wooden handle for you to open and close, with a temperature gauge on there. And in in the middle is a stone, like you said, the pizza stone. Yeah, I've seen and these. I saw one on Star oh. Trek. On I Star one, Trek, I saw one on the new Star Trek. Yeah, Riker oh, okay. was using one in the garden. Uh, I used mine in the garden on Saturday. Nice, yes. <laughs> just like Riker. I was, I was wondering what that was. I thought it was futuristic, but no nope. doubt it's just like <laughs> the pizza. Oven. I got a recently. I got a pasta machine. You know, like to make my your own pasta from scratch. Yeah, and then you put it in and you you turn the thing and it cuts you the crank pasta. It, you crank it and then yeah. it gets thinner. You do it yeah. again. It gets thinner yeah, again. Yeah. yeah, we got one of those. So we're gonna try Is that it like out. A Apparently, they're kids really fun. Play doh. Yeah, it's like thing. the Play-Doh it is fun. thing. Yeah, it is fun. Yeah. My, I got one last year. We we made pasta a few times. Yeah. It is nicer the fresh pasta. Yeah, but with this pizza, I made the pizza. Yeah, so we like we made the dough, stretched it out, rolled it out, put it on. I'm not kidding. This actually was one of the best pizzas I've ever had. Yeah. I know oh, that sounds yeah. stupid because I made it myself, but it's super fresh. It's cooked just right. Yeah, the dough is the. This is the only way you can get the dough like this. It's it was so good. We um, so good. we we make our own pizza, but we it's, we don't have like a pizza oven. We don't have one of those stones either. But we just make the dough because we got a bread machine. So we just make right. the dough in a bread machine. It takes like a couple of hours, and then and then it's ready to go. And you just chuck it in the oven. Put some like so we good. make our own sauce and everything. Is oh you can't beat it, man. Like a fresh like it just tastes so much better because it's. You're using like fresh cheese. We use like fresh yep. vegetables and stuff. We make our own sauce so and However, season it and stuff. There was stuff. a problem. Oh, it's so good. There was a problem. Uh oh. The problem was that this thing is very hungry for fuel. It uses these little wooden pallets. Right. They look they look like some kind of rabbit food or something, but they're just wooden pallets. And you've got to keep tipping them in the back to keep the temperature at about 200. If it's not 200, the piece is not going to cook properly. You've got to get it, you've got to keep it at a steady temperature. Right. Too hot and it just burns, too cool, it doesn't really cook. So it's got to be 200, but you've got to just, you basically it's a two person job. You need someone just tending the fuel all the time, watching the temperature while the other person is getting the pizza dough rolled out, made into pizzas and put in. It's definitely not a one person job. Wow. As me and Mrs. S so discovered. It's, it's, it's and get fueled. these fucking things lit in the first place. Oh my God. Do, do, yeah. do you, could you get like a raspberry pie kind of food dispenser that you use for your goldfish? <laughs> I'm not could, kidding. Like, that would be it. super yeah, handy. Just to like, like drop just, pellets the, in. The temperature feeds back and when it starts to drop, it puts a few more pellets if in. temperature below 200 degrees, do action, drop pellet, uh, open and close bracket, um, raspberry pie dot initialize uh, computer enhance. Uh, I can't see the pellets, uh. <laughs> <laughs> but the instructions on the back of the the thing, like you get a little manual, and it says uh, light the pellets or fuel with a, a taper, such as a newspaper, whilst wearing fireproof gloves. And I'm like, geez, come on, dude, you need fireproof gloves to light a fucking yeah. fire. So I start trying to light these pellets, and they won't burn. And I've got these little, like, you know those things where you go click, click, and the, the fire comes out. Yeah. Like a, oh, what yeah. do they call them? Like a fire lighter, right? One of yeah, those yeah. things. Yeah. So I've got one of those that's like a gas one that is look like one of those butane lighters that goes like a little right. gas flame. Couldn't get these fuckers to light. Just could not get them to light. In the end, luckily, I have a bottle of isopropyl alcohol lying around in, in the, uh, the the old uh, cleaning cupboard there because it's good for getting stickers off of surfaces. If kids ever put a sticker on something and it, you can't get it off, you get the isopropyl alcohol, soak a little on it on a little sponge or something, put it on the sticker, the whole fucking thing comes off like that. It just kills the, the solvent. So I have that lying around. I thought, what if I just fucking soaked some of these pellets in this alcohol? Let me tell you something, friends. That got the pies died. Foom, huge ball of flame. Nice. And the pellets took a off. A mini nuclear and, uh, the, explosion the in your cooked. backyard. Yeah, <laughs> my kids were super cloud. impressed. Nice. 
Oh, man. That, as was I. It's always it's always really satisfying, isn't it? Like uh, using something different to cook food or cooking food for the first time in a way that you're not accustomed yeah. to, and then it turning out really good and delicious. Oh, yeah. But then, sort of on off the back of that, you're like, oh man, I can't wait to do that again. But then, as the days go on, you're like. Am I going to really do that again? It was a lot of work. Yeah, like, uh, it was a novelty. Yeah, it's now a, a it's bit a of chore. a novelty, but then, yeah, it does c- kind of become a chore. But I would like to get to a point in my life where I don't see that as a chore. It just becomes part of my my normal life, and I don't see it as any sort of obstacle. It's just like, this is just the way that I do stuff now. But it takes I mean, a while we, to we've get got, there. We've, we've got the time, haven't we? Like, we're fairly blessed for time. Yeah, uh, yeah. We, were, we don't have to commute. no. I mean, I know, Lewis, you have to, to go into work, but it's like a 10-minute walk or yeah. a 20-minute walk yeah. or whatever. It's not that bad. Yeah. If you compare it to some people who've got to go like an hour and a half, two hours or whatever, all this driving God, yeah. shit. I could imagine them thinking, fuck a pizza oven. At the weekend, I just want to lie down. Um, yeah. But uh, for me, there's no real excuse. Just sort of turn the Wankermatron on and just <laughs> go to town. I want to get... I, 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 I know I was talking about this a while ago, but I want to get like a... I want to get my own little greenhouse going so that I can grow some like oh what herbs. happened with your greenhouse this was episodes and episodes well, ago you were gonna build a fucking greenhouse yeah i know but it's still on the back burner because there's other stuff we we need to get a new car um not a brand new car but we need to replace our current car Clear out that back burner that's taking up loads no, of space no no it's nice it's nice there. to have a back burner there's a couple of things very exciting things on the back burner for us right now which are slowly progressing you've been talking but... about a car for a while too yeah bill gates would fucking love you mate you you, you hardly got any of the things done no didn't i know get the greenhouse didn't get the car you nope. Gonna plant a load of vegetables. Yeah, none of this I shit. To, well, no, I have planted stuff. We just don't have a greenhouse yet. But I okay. have been doing some planting and stuff. I'm growing some chives. I'm growing some thyme. I'm growing some uh, thyme some basil. Yeah, I've got all all these things and growing. You already got plenty of that. It's a pun. It's a pun. Um, it's a pun. And pun uh, we're gro- we have some strawberry plants, and we've had some strawberries off of them. And we have an apple tree, which is going to be ready to, uh, it's already producing apples, but like they haven't, they're not ready to pick yet. But once we pick them, I'm going to try to make some cider this year with the, oh, with the apples. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, I'm Homemade going to do it. cider. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> so you I got a couple of things. A dad. I know. But I mean, I have all of this, this stuff around me that I do nothing with. So I want to start doing it. But another thing that, so we need to get a car. I want to get an electric car, but we're, we might not get an electric car. We'll see. Do you uh, need a car? Yeah, we kind of need a car. Yeah, we don't need it. As much when as you've you... got a kid, you pot around. Yeah, we, we got. But two, they live on like a, a tiny island. It's like five tiles by five tiles. Like I'm just yeah, thinking, how takes, far do they need to? Well, it still takes go. a while to get to some places. You know, it's Sips like, isn't it's... one of those dads who's going to be putting a bicycle helmet on no, and cycling no, around to places. Absolutely you know what I mean? not. That's no. not how it rolls. You no. don't He's an American. No, I don't. He's a, he was born in Canada. He's going to drive everywhere anyway. Yeah, you know I mean, exactly. Uh, cycling is great fun. No, I know. I need to get a bike at some point, but I'm. It's it's that. That's further. That's on like the back, back, back. No, let me tell you, that's a convenient way to get around. How big is your You've got a back, back. I've, I've got, I've got many burners. <laughs> um, but, but on the on the more immediate back burner, um, we're converting our loft into either oh, another no. bedroom or some sort of like rec room or like a you Uh-oh. know like a, just sort of like a place that we can watch movies on bean bags where the kids can study for school or what you know whatever we're we're, we're gonna have we're gonna do get your kids our, already have their own room yes each yeah they do oh yeah. wow okay nice. <clears throat> but so we're gonna just have this extra space which will be really good they're gonna install like dormers and stuff and we're pretty close to actually starting on that so that's like more on the immediate back burner. Do you think that if you have a spare room, you because there's a thing, there's a thing that an old adage where if you have space, you'll fill it up, right, uh-huh. with stuff. Um, so will if you have a spare room, will it? Will you have another kid, or will you suddenly get like a train set? What's going to happen? What kind of hobby is the spare room going to cause? I, I'm not going to get a train set because I already have like a well established hobby and a space for that hobby. But there's stuff, there's there's a couple of bits and pieces that we could do with moving into that room. If we have another baby, then we have a room for the baby. You thinking about so a good. third baby? Oh, it's always an option. It's always a possibility. Wow. It's we haven't like we haven't said no, so that was a yes then. Who knows? Oh, you brave boy. You um, brave, brave man. Well, I mean, oh. I'm not I'm I'm no spring chicken anymore. I don't know if like my 
pancake batter is up to it anymore, but we'll see. Listen to me, Seps. Your your fish can swim, dude. Yeah. Okay, let me I tell got you. got swimmers, yeah. Those lads, yeah, I mean, men can have babies for years. Yeah. Well, years and years and years. Well, yeah. Your lads are still looking, looking to ready. make babies for a very long time. Yeah. No, they're unlimited. It's an unlimited supply. Yeah. Trust me. I've I been know. wanking for years, never run out. <laughs> no, I know. Same. I'm in the same boat as you. Uh, hopefully not at the same time. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to do that in the boat. Jeez. No. Well, it depends um, if there's a hole and you need to like fill it up with some sticky stuff, you know, to get it. I want to get, I want to eventually up. get a boat on my back, 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 back burner. Maybe just like a sailboat or, you know, just something easy. I'm not saying a sail. Easy. I'm not saying a, a sailboat's easy. I'm just saying something that's like easy enough to just like go out uh, for the day on, sort of thing. You know what I mean? Like, now, just if you want, if you want to talk to me about being too lazy to make pasta and pizza, having a boat is a fucking job, dude. Well, I know, like, but you, it doesn't sit there like a car. You got to tend that. No, shit. No, I'm gonna pay somebody to tend to it, though. That's my plan. Oh. But this is a boat. This is, is back- a hole in the water. In, into which you pour money. Yeah, this is, but this is this way. This is back, back, back. But this is if like one day I, 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 you know, win the lottery or something, I would get a boat for sure. Well, I, I mean, it, it makes sense to have one over here because you know you're always close. You're to, an island, exactly. Yeah. yeah, so you could get one, and it could be kind of fun. But what would you call your boat? I would probably just call it the USS Enterprise. <laughs> right. Because why? Why not? Right. Like I think it's pretty, yeah, pretty good can. name. Yeah. Then you could say engage. Engage. Yeah, every time I get onto it or it's, uh, you know, captain on board, I get my son to get the whistle. <laughs> yep. And stuff like that. Um, <laughs> that's the whistle for that's the whistle for the captain who's just boarded the ship, I believe. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, that's the one I want to get. So uh, Everyone's like, oh shit, he's here. Tidy up. Yeah, I don't know. I think tell, it's, the, tell the lazy I, crew. I think to it's tidy fun up. to have I think it's fun to have a couple of things that you are definitely gonna do, and then a couple of things that are just ideas of and they're things that you may never do or whatever, but it's just fun to have those ideas. Like like I don't know, like because we live on an island and we're close to boats and stuff. Like sometimes we go for a walk and I'm like, oh, let's go walk around the marina. And like, I look at all the boats that I'm going to buy, but like, I know I'm never going to buy a boat. Like, right. The two happiest days in the sailor's life are the day he buys the boat and the day he sells the boat. No, you know what? I like the idea though of, I don't know if you guys share this, but I like the idea of just uh, having like this vessel that you just take out for the day, you know, you pack some food and you maybe like pack some extra clothes just in case or whatever. And you take your family and you just go on like a little adventure. You sail out and you raid the coastline sure. of France. Something like that. <laughs> but like, you know, yeah, I, I like just the like the, that did. idea of like a little adventure. But you're, it's What are the rules all yours. about having a boat? Where can you go? Fuck like if nice. I'm if can I just go and park up in France at a marina or will yeah, they be like can, yeah I mean where are your pipe th- There's visiting uh there's vi- there's visitor berths at most marinas that you can but What do I like I'm a, I'm technically an international traveler Uh-huh like they, this must be controlled they have coast guards and stuff yeah, to make yeah, sure they, that people don't just rock up Yeah yeah I think even just to get into the marina in the first place I think you have to I think somebody comes out and basically boards you and checks Do they your swim stuff out and it, well, obviously, yeah, they do. We act around right there a moment. Dives into they're the mer- water. They're mermaid. They're merman and mermaids <laughs> <laughs> employed mermen. by the uh, by the government the people to swim Where out and meet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> of course, yeah. I mean, this is the. Uh, Kingdom of uh, Poseidon, we're talking about here. So you have to have. <laughs> you got to have your paper. You have to have. So, s- show them a conch shell. Yeah, exactly. With your name on the <laughs> like, I'll trade you three doodads for your spork. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, no, but I'm pretty sure I, it has to be controlled, right? Because if it wasn't, uh, it's it's kind of like. Um, personal uh air travel you know like the little like cessna planes and stuff like that yeah when they land at an airport i mean otherwise the the people would just be uh, smuggling drugs left right and center there'd be no fucking stopping them right sailboat full of drugs little cessna full of drugs yeah i mean that's the way it stopped all the time like there was a there was a thing in the news a couple of years ago where one of those one of those little planes like a two a two-seater plane uh, was coming in from france or whatever and as it was as it was sort of like lining up to land or whatever, somebody noticed something fall out of the plane. Wow! Somehow, I don't know. Maybe they were wa- they must have been watching it or something. So they go to the field where they see this thing land, and it was just like this gigantic fucking crate of marijuana. And wow! Uh, they yeah, they got arrested and everything. So somebody's watching. Like they 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 know that this 
people are up to this kind of stuff. So I'd imagine it extends to boats and shit as well. We'd have to. It has That's to. That's amazing. Yeah. People smuggling drugs and stuff in innovative ways is always like so. Like I don't know how they even discover it half the time. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, w- I, I, I was recommended a YouTube video the other day of the Coast Guard in America trying to stop a mini sub. Wow. That was like drug smugglers were had they had a fucking little mini well, sub yeah, and they're trying I, to take it underwater. And this lad, one of the Coast Guard lads, is on the outside banging on it yeah. and pointing his gun at them. This is the yeah. And they opened the hatch. I remember hearing I was like, Just about fucking this. dive, lads. I, it's a submarine. I think they I think <laughs> I, I think um when the Soviet Union was a thing, I think uh, a couple of the 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 South American cartels bought old subs off them and stuff for just for that, just to smuggle smuggle drugs. Man, or can you imagine getting on that? I heard well, a lot of yeah. these mini subs were just like shit, though, like really shoddily Man, made. Man, I would not. I wouldn't use. even go on a sub with a highly trained, like the best trained crew. I wouldn't even go on a sub, let alone Terrifying. with some dude who just like read the manual and wants to smuggle lots of drugs, like. I, would I, be, I mean, if you're buying a secondhand sub from the USSR, there ain't no manual. No, but the thing is, these guys aren't, aren't these these guys aren't diving down really deep or anything either, right? Like they're just yeah, they're not under I the icebergs. I think whatever. they think as long as we're not sitting on the water, they can't see us. <laughs> like they just don't know about <laughs> yeah, just sonars underneath. and radars and stuff. They're just like. If they can't see us, we don't exist. It's like Mr. Invisible. Also, they, they fly planes around to look for subs. Yeah, of course. Subs, yeah. And you can see them unless you're super deep. Yeah. I mean, I just think, I just love the idea of this crew who don't really know how sub, how this sub works. <laughs> yeah. Like, it, it turns up. They're like, okay, the new sub is here, guys. Uh, <laughs> Where do we park let's it, try man? It out. And they, they get inside. <laughs> what does all this do? Like, how... How do you, where do you begin? I'm not a submarine captain. Are you? No. Okay, let's fill it with drugs. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. It sounds like such a great idea and like a good idea for a movie, but the fucking logistics and the reality of it are just garbage, aren't they? Fuck me. I mean, th- these lads didn't even realize that if there are people, if you're on the surface and there are people on the on the boat telling you to, to get out, you can just go under the water. Then those lads either drown or let go. Oh, like fuck. You, you're a sub. <laughs> yeah. They're like, if only we had some way to escape <laughs> these surface ships. <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> Why'd you buy it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's got to be easier ways. Well, I think we're I think we're at the point now where it's it's much harder to smuggle drugs with boats and stuff because they've tried everything, right? They've tried subs. Uh, it's been counted. Having their own little plane, strapping them to people. They've tried super fast, like, ribs, uh, you know, speedboats and stuff to, like, you know, just try to brute force their way in as fast as they can. Those have failed as well because... Uh, somehow they've been stopped and confiscated and now they use those boats against them and stuff. I saw this like documentary about it one time. <laughs> and uh, I feel like like all of like the modern machines and stuff like that, it's, it's much harder, right? They dug tunnels, they found the tunnels like under the borders or whatever. So all that's left really is people uh, putting drugs um, in their asses and that's it. Like that's, Honestly, people that's, are That's got to be the most reliable way still of doing Manpower. it. Manpower is cheap yeah and those people want to get into the country anyway so you're like here's what we're gonna do you want to go into america we're gonna strap you full of drugs we'll give you some money if the drugs get over the border we'll give you some more money and if none of this happens we're gonna kill your family because they're all still here yeah so make sure you do it and they go okay or they just say we're gonna kill your family do this for us and they go okay strap a load of drugs on them they walk over the border you unstrap the drugs and then you send them back and they do it again Think how big the border is Man, of I any don't country. Know. Well, I think that I don't with- even know. Like, if it's that, is that's what it is? I think it's the trade, right? It's got to be like the millions of tons of freight that go between Mexico and America every year or whatever, right? It's got to be that. It's got to be those the the trucks that drive, you know, huge amounts of I don't know, fucking avocados and tequila yeah. and shit. Well, I think Jay, like, I, you just stick them in the back of there, and they won't check half the time. Oh, they don't want to check do, every though, truck, even if they check. check one in ten. Like, yeah, they can't check. Cares? Them you all. lose ten percent of your drugs. They check a lot of that stuff. I mean, they, they, have... they had that thing where they can turn cocaine into, like, they can injection mold it. Like they found a way to liquefy it, injection mold it into shit. Most and then, mostly now, I think the way that they do it is they break it down into components, which all are seemingly uh, not a big deal, and then spread them out and stuff like that, and then sort of reassemble the drugs when they're where they need to be, right? Like in America. So you're carrying a ship with the day of coal and cane. You have coal. <laughs> 
and you have cane. What are you trying to do with it? <laughs> oh, uh, well, uh, the co is uh, used for farming stuff, and the cane uh, also useful for farming. So we're gonna head. Uh, we're gonna head over with our co and our cane and our um, our hair and our oin as well. That's a second shipment. Don't worry about that. And the uh, crystals are over there, and the meths are in a different truck. <laughs> yeah. So this is all separate stuff. Doesn't go together. Obviously, <laughs> we couldn't reassemble. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, don't worry about it. No, I think I think that's like another like fairly fairly common way of doing it. You can it. just reassemble it there, right? You know Why what? do you have to bring I, over the finished product? What I think I think the future of all this is going to be um, like a miniaturized version of what SpaceX is doing with like the rockets and stuff. I think that they'll <laughs> just launch these mini rockets that are hard to detect um, internationally, and then how do you how do you hide a rocket? Sips? It's a, like a little tiny one, you know, like you know, like at the rocket club at school. It's like it'll be like a little tiny rocket, but it can carry like enough drugs to make it worthwhile. But then you can like with your Raspberry Pi, you can make it r make it land without crashing and stuff on a moving platform. So there'll be like a, in a the, lake the drug or baron version yeah. of Elon Musk, like Elon Meth. Yeah, Elon. <laughs> yeah. Elon Elon Meth is trying to ship over <laughs> some drugs. That's right. Hey, Space we ecstasy. developed a uh, a rocket that can take off with drugs on board, land, yeah. drop off the drugs but via Raspberry Pi interface, of course, yeah. and then uh, and then take off again and land back in Mexico. That, that's the plan. That's it. That's what. That's the future. I, I'm predicting Do you, do you think that, that the future is actually that they're just going to legalize all this shit? That's, uh, that's some future, of it they will. Some of it they will. Not all of it, though. I mean, I don't think they would never... Because this is a very expensive never, fight. They can't, they can't realistically uh, legalize, like, heroin and, like, uh, cocaine. They already have. They've legalized... You know, but, like, not... not they, they essentially have. You've got people hooked on opiates yeah but legally. yeah but even that's a huge problem though and and the problem yeah. is in in um in some of the places that this is happening when the money runs out or you or whatever you can't get access to these things anymore then these people go to the streets and get heroin and stuff which is obviously right. worse so but it's, at the very least they're not buying bad shit well you know what i mean now, I think, well, one of the will, ideas is that if you the, if you legalize it you decrease you, if you decriminalize it at least having it doesn't mean like here's what I was thinking the other day. Let's say, because uh, in in America you get banged up a lot. Like there's a lot of fucking people in jail in America. They they've got the biggest prison population in the world, right? Mm. And they're definitely at the forefront of the war on drugs, as it were, because they've got their whole border is South America, right? Yeah. Central and South America. It's like drug central. They a lot of those countries produce an awful lot of the world's cocaine and all the rest of it. Yeah. So they see an awful lot of it. You've got a lot of poverty in America. Disparity between rich and poor, and drugs are a big problem. Like you said, the opiate crisis, part of that was that was started by people getting legal prescriptions, and now they've turned to the illegal drugs trade. Yeah. And if you're going to have to stop these guys bringing drugs in, like if you didn't do uh, anything- A lot of these things aren't designed for you to be on them for a long time, though. That's the thing. That's the, Right, but they'll just keep giving them to you. Yeah. Like for anything, you got a sore knee, you better have some fucking opiates. Like it's ridiculous. Yeah. What should be ibuprofen and a, and a sit down, and just be patient is well we're going to pump you full of morphine cuz we get paid money to to shift this stuff so the so the problem is if you're not going to legalize things like crystal fucking meth and heroin and all that yeah. um which is fair enough how about you do have some legal I don't drugs? know I, I can't imagine that they would um I don't know if they'll ever legalize like um um crack or uh, angel dust or <laughs> <laughs> right, but if you if you legalize drugs and you allow companies to make synthetic versions of those drugs or to make some fancy new drug, imagine if Coca Cola put cocaine back in the Coke. You know what I mean? What what would that change? If people are doing Coke anyway, if you can now buy special cocaine plus Coca Cola, what's the deal? Like uh, I, I've been trying to think about it. What would be the end game? Would it make things better? Would it make things worse? Are we better off with drugs being illegal? Yeah. Given the number of people that die. The number of assholes that that make money from the drugs trade. Yeah. If we take that away, what are they going to do? You have to protect people from themselves. I think with weed being obviously legalized, I'd be interested in seeing how that has changed the use of like harder stuff, right? Because everyone always gets, oh, it's a slippery slope. You know, as soon as people start smoking is. weed, they'll be smoke. They'll be taking well, crack next. Um, I mean, here's the thing: how many people do you know that? that smoke some weed and then think, I fancy some fucking uh, bath salts, actually. You know, this weed has got me hankering for some bath salts. And they take yeah, and something that's 
really going to fuck them they're up. They're fucking like, chowing down on a Pritt stick that. and they're like, you know, <laughs> sniffing the fucking Sharpies. They're just going full drugs. No, yeah. I well, think you've already had to make a bad decision if you're going to do those kind of what is, things What anyway. is the next sort of medicinal kind of... Because everyone's on this health kick now, right? Even weed is like, it's good for... It's good, it calms you down. It's good for your stress. It's good for your mental health. You know, everyone's smoking weed for various things. Oh, I've got a bit of a sore thumb or whatever have a little smoke on that weed like do you know what I mean it feels like it's the <laughs> feels like it's the fucking solution to every medical problem so what's the next thing that the pharmaceutical companies will be putting and it's got to only be a little bit less controversial than weed right or may, maybe more controversial like just you know what's the next thing? it can't be straight to heroin no but maybe like magic, magic mushrooms maybe psychedelics maybe like that stuff's gonna be legalized. i mean if the idea next. is oh we can't sell this because it causes lasting damage we already sell lots of shit that causes lasting damage cigarettes is a prime example they're very bad for you alcohol is a prime example fatty foods we let people drive cars for god's sake cars are incredibly dangerous any old fucker can drive a car yeah and I just feel like it's one of those things where I'm I'm not sure if I'm for or against it at all. Like I really don't know. I would I would want to know what what would happen if you decriminalized all these drugs. Would would people suddenly start doing more of them? Would you do heroin if it was legal, or is what putting you off the idea that you don't want to be spending the fucking rest of your life on heroin? I, th I think it's not going to happen in our lifetimes. I think that we could all appreciate, and we all knew before weed was legalized in various places that it's not that bad right yeah, you know, yeah. everyone was joking about it since the 60s and 70s you know everyone's legalized kind of, weed man everyone was very legal. kind of it was kind of in the public consciousness that it was it was okay um and so it was almost like it was a mistake to have it be uh, banned whereas i don't think anyone's disagreeing that heroin and cocaine and crack are probably but not then, good but then you've to got to fight around. this war on drugs which is putting people in prison which is costing trillions of dollars globally to to fight this uh and it's not working it's clearly not working i mean it, there's there's still it's not like drugs is a thing of the past now because we've been fighting it for 40 years it's still there so what's what's what are we hoping to achieve i don't know like you have to stop people taking it in the first place maybe you have to solve the systemic problems at the bottom of society fix wealth inequality all these big problems yeah. people, that are not solvable because rich people love their money too much and don't want to give it but to but they're happy people. to see the money go on the war on drugs so if you stop the war on drugs and spend that money, as you say, on helping people to not be poor and desperate and shit like that, would that kill the drug trade in itself? No. Or would people take more There's of it? There's always going to be people who want to do drugs. And that's true. And cocaine is like the rich man's drug as well, isn't it? I mean, you, you, you might not be an avid drug user, but you might be tempted to just do drugs Sometimes for fun, you just know to what see I mean? what it was like. I know. I, well, if I could pop to the corner shop and buy some acid, no. Well, I, my I I'm not it. saying like you have to. You know what I mean? Like, like I know, I know plenty of people who don't do like drugs every day, but every once in a while they will just do drugs yeah. because it's fun. It's like. You know, I could either drink tonight or maybe I'll just do drugs instead tonight for fun. Uh, but like, I think and then not do it again broad, for like though. two months or something. You know what I mean? It's I've read quite a lot of stories about people saying things like, you know, I never wanted to do heroin because I was scared I would get a taste for it. You know, and then I did heroin and I got a taste for it and I fucking ruined my life. Yeah, you know what I mean? sure. I feel like, yeah, yeah. I feel like that kind of that stuff happens, is really sad. Of course. But like, um, you know, that can happen with with alcohol as well. Like there, there's there are legal things that 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 can easily happen with, too, where your life can be ruined because you 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 can't stop yourself or you can't help yourself yeah. or whatever. Well, people don't have much choice either. You know, uh, they're kind of they're thrown into these situations and they have to try and cope with them. And sometimes, you know, also, yeah. if you live in if you're surrounded by people who like you've grown up with shitty parents who do crystal meth and shit like that and all your friends do you're gonna do it like that's pretty much the way it is like if you grew up in a puritanical place where nobody drinks or smokes you're probably not going to do those things either like people people are influenced so much by what they see growing up it's true i know that yeah. if you if your parents smoke you're much more likely to smoke right both my parents smoked growing up so as soon as i was old enough to smoke i started smoking yeah um if they'd been doing shitloads of uh <laughs> some parents heroin. teach their kids to play chess and they become chess prodigies others <laughs> Teach their told kids me to, to do drugs. Yeah. My um, one of my good friends growing up, his dad was a chain smoker. He smoked like three packs a day or whatever. 
And we, when we started smoking, it was very easy for us to do that because we could either steal cigarettes from him. So <laughs> it was, you know, whatever. Like he didn't really notice. He had like fucking boxes of cigarettes in the house. Amen. Uh, but, but also it was easy for us to, to smoke them as well because we could just smoke in his basement and nobody could tell the difference, right? Like right. it was pretty, it, it was like, it was pretty easy. I, I, I guess what I'm saying is that Depending on your the context and circumstance and stuff, some of this stuff is surprisingly really easy to try or get into or whatever, and you may not even think about it. You know what I mean? Like, you might not approach any of this stuff with any real sort of like uh, reservation or fear or anything. It may just be like, oh well, you know, I'm in the mood to try this. Let's go. Yep. You know, like and you know, like all the all the factors align with that, and it's and next thing you know, you're. <laughs> smoking a pack of cigarettes a day at the age of 14 which is not great did you do that happens <laughs> yeah wow. yeah fuck yeah i smoked like quite a bit like during high school i mean it didn't help we had a smoking section at high school oh my as god well. yeah that's, uh, that's with, crazy yeah that, so we had these like this whole section outside with picnic tables and everything so like you know like be like oh are you gonna go to gym class no <laughs> just gonna go to the smoking section and <laughs> skip gym class we, like, we, just, i can't believe you had a place that you could go to smoke like that's well uh, it was like the it was like the early 90s right so it was still oh, like they we're trying to be right on like a college we had smoke in areas i smoked a hell of a lot of college yeah yeah but like i mean i used to where the place that i worked at when i was in high school i worked at a grocery store like the manager's office like was a smoking room basically like there was still you could still smoke in restaurants you could still smoke in i mean in quebec you could smoke in shopping malls you could just walk around a shopping yeah, mall you could smoke, smoke everywhere I, mean, I remember going to new york new york yeah. was the first place i went to where there was i was in a restaurant and i couldn't smoke there yeah it blew my mind yeah and when i went out on the street to smoke this one was like uh -huh, do you mind yeah i was like i'm, I'm outdoors like i'm smoking yeah what it is was, your problem it, it's just it was a different time it was just a lot easier to to do it like we used to the weather was really bad um, in in where I grew up, like in Canada, the part of Canada I grew up in. Uh, for like six months of the year, the weather is terrible, snowing and raining all the time and stuff like that. And uh, like right next to my high school, we had this, you know, like one of those outdoor malls, like uh, it was like like a strip mall sort of thing. So there's right. like a big grocery store and then a bunch of other stores. And then inevitably there was like a couple of fast food places dotted in there as well. We used to walk over there for lunch and there was a subway there and you were allowed to smoke in there. Like, uh, so you'd buy a, like a sub and sit down and eat and there was ashtrays and just smoke. So we'd just <laughs> we'd sit in there for hours if the weather was bad, just smoke our heads off and eat subs and whatever. Like it was- me and, We used to go to, uh, there was a, me and Mrs. F and a couple of our friends back in Bournemouth that we were at college with, we would go to, there was a tea room Near the near the near the square, just up the road, Richmond Hill, just up Richmond Hill on the right there. For any uh, Bournemouthians there, it used to be there, and we would go in there, and it would be us and a bunch of old ladies, and everyone was smoking, and just we'd be in there drinking tea for like two or three hours, yeah, and just smoking our asses off and talking, yeah. And it's weird to think that we were thinking, let's go somewhere and sit down and just fucking smoke and drink tea. That's what we're gonna do. Yeah, we're just gonna go smoke and drink tea. But, uh, interestingly, in Europe, they've uh, you know enacted these laws as well, which prevent a lot of smoking indoors. Um, in the same way that that we've got them now, but they have nice nicer weather than us, and so they've just moved it all outside. So anytime there is a like outdoor restaurant, it's obviously. Every every table will there'll be a bunch of old folks smoking at like almost or everyone or just not even old folks just every restaurant there'll be tons of people smoking it feels like I've just seen it so many times um, and it's it's really funny just and also quite shocking almost like I go to an, on holiday to Italy or whatever and I'll deliberately go and like sit inside because I'll the last time I was at a restaurant you know like, it was just two 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 old granddads blowing smoke left right and center <laughs> right. yeah. Um, I mean, when when we went to Berlin, was it last year or a year before the TwitchCon? I guess it must have been two years ago. Me and Tom went to a a pub in uh, in Berlin where you could just there was a smoking room indoors underground, and it was packed. We were in there the whole time. Oh God! And my eyes were red by the end of it because I'm I've just become unused to cigarette smoke. From I haven't smoked cigarettes. Well, in those my... things are like a hot box, but also they are almost always now 
super disgusting, right? Oh, because it was no revolting. One is, no one is building new smoking rooms or, or renovating hotels to have smoking rooms in them, right? They, if if any, if a hotel has a smoking room, it's left over from uh, old times, you know. And a smoking room, because one of my friends, for some well, for some reason, a uh, convention I was at, um, had got chosen a hotel with a smoking room in, and I saw it. And it was like just the walls were like yellow, oh, and yeah. it was like it's, absolutely yeah. disgusting. Yeah, I mean, you don't. It's like it's like turning the lights on in a in a you know nightclub um, and being like, oh my fucking god! Oh, it's, man. Yeah, that was always the worst. Yeah, yeah. They, like, whoever came up with the idea of getting people out of the nightclub at the end of the night by just turning the fucking lights on, genius. Yeah, because the moment you see it in, oh. the, in the light, oh, and everybody looks the worst. all stingy. You're like, oh, <laughs> oh it's leaving. Everybody's all fucking sweaty and stuff, but you don't notice it when the lights the are off. all sticky but... and it's like got trash all over oh, it, and you don't realize. God, it. Yeah, yeah, it feels awful. Worst. And your it shoes are all worst. gross, and you're like, what the fuck? What have I been doing? And then also. Like, there's this thing where I remember going to Japan and they used to have these, like, in um, Akihabara, which is the sort of techie district, they had these big arcades and they used to allow smoking in them for so many years right. that they still smell awful. And the smoke rises in these sort of five, they're quite tight, like, they're not like big buildings, but they're quite tall. Right. And so the smoke just rises up and up and it gets worse and worse. <laughs> and at the top floor, it had just this, like, you know, two foot high cloud of smoke, like at the top oh, of yeah. the thing, you know, and you could just about um, see the, the video games that you're playing on the top floor. And but but because of that, so many years of that, they just those buildings just absolutely stink. Yes. of like it's, it's old cigarette stench. smoke, and they can't get rid of it. Like cleaning will not just it will not. It's just. They're, they're just permanently ruined. Yeah. It's amazing to think that people used to think smoking was perfectly good for you. Like, it honestly is one of those things that even while you're doing it, you're, there's, it's kind of a badge of honor with smokers that you don't care, right? I don't fucking care. I smoke. Yeah. But you do. I mean, it is obviously bad. But like, I know vaping probably isn't good for me, but I really fucking do love they it. Still allow, I think they still allow a lot of smoking in Vegas and casinos, right? Because they want people yeah. to get that. Yeah. They Vegas. want people to be comfortable drinking and smoking and gambling. Last time I went, which was a couple of years ago, um, you were allowed to smoke. Uh, I don't think it'll ever change because it's they... It's a state-by-state state thing. I know that there's places in Florida you can smoke. There are, there are bars I go, with, go to um, when I see my dad. There's a couple of bars you can go and you can smoke in the bar. Yeah. And they're just like... It's. I mean, one of one of the excuses is they'll just have a, a fucking humidor. Like this one bar just has a, a humidor there. You can buy cigars, and because of that, they're allowed to say, "Yeah, you can fucking smoke." It's a cigar bar. We need to be able yeah. to smoke indoors. And they're like, "Okay." I think the last time I went to Gamescom, um, I was there with um, Hat Films and some other people, and we were we we went into a cigar lounge. It was like in our hotel. We went in there for a joke, but ended up smoking lots of cigars. In this, but it was it was all indoors, and like you said, it had yeah. like all the right like um, equipment, ventilation, everything. But I mean, this is that, that long ago. But that seems to be smoking in Germany. When I when I was there, I, I'm always surprised how many people smoke there. Like I always thought, I, like when I go to Sweden and stuff, they're all doing the snooze, right? They're not. You don't see many actual smokers. Uh -huh. You just see them with that little pouch they tuck under their lip. It's disgusting. You see that. But you don't see that many smokers. You do see some, but when I went to Germany, it was fucking tons. I was like, wow, people love smoking in Germany, apparently. Yeah. I was kind of surprised. God, yeah. I mean, every bar we went to, it, when we because we went to Germany last time, we were, um, what were we doing? We were Paradox Con, I think. And we went around the hotel, from the hotel around to the local bar. And outside the bar, loads of people just standing on the street, yeah, you know, yeah. holding their drinks. Yeah, yeah. Because they couldn't smoke inside. You went inside, there were like three people in there. Do you know what I mean? People would just yeah. go in, buy a beer, stand outside, even though there wasn't like any allocated seating or anything outside, right. you know, yeah. for them to sit. They would just they just wanted to drink and smoke together. And so that was the only option. It's like in, it's when so I was funny. in Lisbon last summer, it was like that too. You like because the weather was so nice. Um and there was a lot of people smoking there too. Everywhere we went, um, you 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 go inside and there's just it's empty. Like everybody was just outside, crowded onto like a patio or or whatever, you know. Like it was just everybody wanted to be outside. Everybody was just smoking a lot and stuff. Like it's still it's still really it's still a really popular thing to do, even though we know the like the health implications and and stuff. Uh, there's a lot more awareness about it, but it's like some people. I don't know it's weird, isn't it? I guess some. I guess if you've been yeah. smoking for a long time, usually, I, I think usually the thing that gets people to stop smoking is a health scare, right? That's what usually sort of kickstarts the okay, I better stop. You know, like I like I know that the same friend uh, whose dad was a chain smoker, he's quit 
uh, in the past couple of years. Um, I mean, this is a guy who smoked a ton. Um, but then I think he went for like a routine checkup at the doctor and the doctor was like, oh shit, this is not very good. Like, <laughs> you know, maybe you should cut back on smoking or just quit altogether because this is only going to get worse. And he was like, ah, oh, fuck. Okay. Like I don't, it's not cancer or anything, but like there, there are other side effects to smoking, like, oh, other there's than, tons. you know, that, that can, can debilitate you or, or, or cause you like a, there's so many, it's actually ridiculous. degree of discomfort for the rest of your life sort of thing. So like, uh, I think that was like his big sort of, holy shit, I better stop smoking. Like I, I don't actually want to get sick. I think or all die. smokers eventually get a wake up call. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. My father-in-law quit a few years ago. He used to smoke cigars, like little mini cigars all, all day, all day. He'd be smoking cigars. And then the doctor was like, you need to quit. He was like, okay. And stopped. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, wow. It was that I, easy. I think sometimes, sometimes it's it's some sort of. I, I think they confronted with their own mortality. I think that's what it is. People don't. People believe they're invincible, especially in their teens and twenties. They don't even think that anything can hurt them. And often, like they're they're right in a sense. Like if you stop soon enough, apparently, like if you if you smoked and stopped soon enough. And you have, I don't know, 10 years or something to clean it all out. That might be a myth, but that's what I that's heard. That's what I heard too. And it might be bollocks. So so the bet, talking about betting, it is kind of making a bet on your life, I guess, with smoking. You know, because some people some people do like, some people, oh, I got 80 years old. I've been smoking my entire <laughs> life and I'm fine. Look at me. Yeah. Uh, whereas other people are like 45 and they're like, <laughs> I've got I'm, the oxygen tank here. Yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? They fucking... Anyway, um, there's this thing I was reading this week about this thing called the Kelly bet, right? Which is kind of like um, a kind of a mathematical formula that tells you what your... It, you, you basically have to put in your timeline, okay? So it might be like 30 minutes. Uh, or it might be like the rest of your life. And, it, and you put in how much money you've got and you put in like um, what you're betting on and what the return potentially could be. And it kind of tells you what bet size you should make um, in order to make the maximum gain over time. Um, so for example, in a study, you, you're given $25, okay, and told that there's a coin that will land on heads 60% of the time. Okay. okay? So on average, the, the, the coin will land on heads, okay? Um, participants were given 30 minutes to play. Um, so on average, they could place about 300 bets in that time. Um, and you had to make as much money as you could. So, what would your strategy be if you were playing that study? Do you guys have any? What would your what would your gambling Wouldn't strategy you just, be? If you get sixty percent return, I mean, you're, you're getting a return. 10, you're getting a ten percent over the odds, right? On heads, so, yeah, yeah. So, if you just keep betting forever, you're going to make money. I mean, uh, so so what's your what's your strategy? You've got thirty minutes. Red. What, what's I your would strategy? put it all on red and my the day of my birthday. You put twenty five dollars on head straight away, would you, Sips? Yeah. And okay. <laughs> Wait, wait, so, so why wouldn't I? If it's got a 60% chance of winning, why wouldn't I just do that? Well, apparently two-thirds of participants gamble on tails at some point, knowing why? that it's got a lower chance. Because, I don't know, they're having fun. You know, people, like, it just shows you that most people are stupid, I guess. Okay. So two-thirds of people gamble on tails at some point. 28% uh, of people went bust, given that they, you know, starting with $25, they managed to go bust. Um, and lose it all, even though you know flipping the coin was sixty percent chance of of getting heads. Right. The average profit was only ninety dollars. Right. So that's, that's average the average profit person. was ninety dollars. Yeah. So in oh, fact, that's not that bad. Given given this, you know, they had to they put a cap on of two hundred fifty dollars because if they didn't, people would have won you know thousands, yeah, like thousands and thousands. But the, the 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 optimum strategy, if you like, if you put it through this Kelly Kelly bet system, is to stake 20% of your, so $5 out of your 25 to begin with. And then every time you lose, you take it down to 20% of what you've got left. And every time you win, you go up to 20% of uh, what you've got now. Okay. And so that with that strategy, um, you have a 95% chance of reaching the cap of 250. Cool. There you go. So, so it's like a little clever strategy, but that betting system can be used to other things too, right? So for example, to if you have a, a knowledge 
of how likely something's going to be. Like you could even use it for things like because we talked about betting a lot last year, uh, last week, and some people linked this to me, and I was interested to hear about it. Um, but it's but it's like um, if you have an idea of, of how likely something is, you can assess for the rest of your life, and um, and it's something which Warren Buffett has done as well with investing. Right, he's used things like this to. To, to try and get to a certain wealth value by a certain time and see well, how... Well, he made it. Dude's rich as hell. He's done great, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, he's probably used about every single strategy known to man over time. He's the, the king of investing, isn't he? Old Warren I Buffett. think well, if you get to a point where you're very rich, which he was, and then you just don't make shit decisions, which a lot of people do. Like if someone comes to you with a business plan that that's just doesn't really make sense just don't invest in it so like the gearbox most of the ones that fail it's like how did they ever think that was going to work but they managed to find people that are gullible and stupid and give them the money would you would you make like an auto pellet dropper would you make like an would would you make and sell that would you make like um is it like a product to help another product like a like an isopropyl alcohol when soaker when is the right time to invest in some peewee herman ass shit you know like what what's what are the good ones and not the, the goldfish feeder the bad ones like yeah like the goldfish well feeder. then again right. like I mean, the, the Etsy's exists, right? You could have like an electronic Etsy where people make little solutions for shitty Pee Wee Herman problems. Right, but uh, you, it, you get money by, by investing in shit that everybody's going to want. So that's it. Like if it's something like a thing that tops up the pellets in the back of a pizza thing, that's a terrible idea because... Like I know all, one guy who has one of those. Right. You know me. The yeah. only one. And how many of those people that have these things are going to want that additional thing? But that's a third of the guys that you know. <laughs> that's a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, I know, but we don't know. <laughs> Let's extend that up to the whole the world. The other thing as well is that we don't know if Flax is ever going to use that thing again. We had this discussion already where we thought, hang on, it was fun to use it once, but maybe it's maybe it's more hassle than it's worth in the future. So like, yeah. there's a lot of stuff you got to take into account before you invest your hard-earned cash. Yeah. That's God. what Warren Buffett did. That's what Warren Buffett about it. did. He thought about it. Just try yeah. thinking about it. Yeah. That's my advice, at potential investors. It's hard. I, just, just think about it's it. It's hard to predict the future, but if you ever see anything about a miniature rocket that transports drugs internationally and uses a Raspberry Pi to land on a moving platform in Get on it. the middle of a lake, yep. I that's feel like one. that's going to be a good one to invest in, and you'll probably that's see a Cisco lot of- the Cisco drugs delivery system. You'll see a lot of return on your investment for that one i think i mean i, I can't people have been it. like shipping just posting stuff i think that might be the way it's done in future because everyone's now getting deliveries right yeah. amazon is like drones and, and home deliveries drones. especially after the lockdown everyone's Ugh. just everyone's just getting stuff delivered and you could just vacuum wrap everything for cheap true you know you just yeah. vacuum because that's how I, i'd buy stuff if i was maybe that's maybe drugs. that's what they should be doing when they when they don't have a condom handy and they're ready they vacuum wrap your penis in those vacuum wrapper machines yeah Oof, it doesn't sound yeah. painful Go no. for shrink it. wrap just vacuum vacuum wrap your your johnson i don't know if the, i because you use the cling film in the microwave and the cling film never gets that hot though does it you know it just it it's goes got no water soft. in it do you, do you, have you guys ever used that stuff that you um you have to use like the it's like you know like the cling film that you have that in your kitchen or whatever it's like sticky right like it it kind of like has like That's some just static static isn't it? or something and it sticks yeah. but it 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 sort of like you know, it, it really does cling right onto the thing. Like, uh, but you know, sometimes you can get this plastic that doesn't have that. It doesn't cling, but you have to like blow dry it or whatever to make it uh, oh, yeah. like half melted or whatever to make it stick. I mean, I, I remember like shrink wrap. I used to have to use that stuff at. I think it was when I was working at Blockbuster. Wow. I think uh, it was like for used games. We had to like shrink wrap these these like used games or whatever and put labels makes on them, them seem more palatable it makes the, yeah 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 like it that. makes them seem newer would you guys do that to your to your johnson's as well like just put no. some loose plastic and blow dry it onto your depends how desperate i'm not putting any i'm not putting any <laughs> household implement or tool no near near my junk yeah i well i don't know investing is uh is it is a tricky one i think the thing is um, if investing was easy, everybody would be filthy rich, right? I guess like that's the, it, it's like a, yeah, that's true. It's a gamble in itself. You have to know your markets. You have to know, you have to know, you have to have some sort of idea of what people are going to want in the future. You have to be able to predict the future or maybe just luck out. 
hard, you know, like maybe it's just I think a, that is it. a crap. I think shoot. A, certainly initially, but you can't tell me that you, you're going to be lucky over time. I mean, that's like saying that really good poker players, oh, you're just lucky a lot. Yeah, well, I, th- no, I, I mean, feel like with, makes good decisions I, I feel like with investing, like you said, I think once you pass a certain amount of money, it's hard not to make more money in a way. Because you can, yeah. you, you can, you can diversify a lot more than. Say, also, you're going to surround yourself with started. smart people, yeah. right? You're surrounding yourself with people who are going to say, "Here's a really good investment, sir. Oh, it looks good. Yeah, yeah. Whether I'm getting my money, bye, 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 bye." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel like it's. I feel like once it's kind of like a there's a bit of a snowball effect with all of it after a while. I mean, not I'm not in ed- every case. Obviously, there's some people who. Mass um, a tremendous amount of money and lose it all, right? Through a couple of bad decisions or whatever. But I feel like I've, I I feel like um, the opposite happens sometimes too. You know, like I, I feel like some sometimes somebody will make one or two good decisions, um, but then continually get richer and richer off just some average decisions after that. You know what I mean? Like if you don't make any terrible decisions, you're probably fine. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good way to, to live, like you've live your life. Yeah. Just make bad, just make continual bad decisions. Or at least as long as none of them are terrible. Average ones. Average just decisions. Just make average decisions and you should be fine. Uh, it should all even out in the end. That's a great, that's great life advice. Yeah, I think, I think is, we should leave it there. Yeah. Holy crap. There you go. Just make average decisions, guys. Shanane. Yeah. <laughs> and you'll do just good. Yeah. Good enough. Just keep going. Yeah. Don't do drugs. kids. <laughs> All smoke. Bad, it's bad. Um, all right, thanks everyone. See you next week. Yeah. See ya. See you later. Bye. Bye.